Okay, this is a attempt to trying to get soldering on camera. It's already got one part on there. So this is a little service mount inductor here. So I'm gonna put some flux on here. Okay, that was good. Okay, next up is a... Hmm. Let's do another capacitor. So I always flux first. Alright, so I'm just going to go through and uh, finish this board. I'm probably just going to put this one on and then do the rest without the camera. And uh, by the way, I'm just using a um, Heiko FX888, good iron, and some uh, small pitch lead, it, lead solder, and uh, some pen flux, and some fine point tweezers, and that's all I'm using. Yeah, it would be nice to have like a reflow oven set up and use some solder paste and populate all the boards and then just throw them in the oven but yeah I don't make a whole lot of boards so I don't have a oven set up yet so I'm just going to be putting them together like this for now no oh, it's a bit off center I think I'll shuffle it over Okay, that's looking good. Alright, so I just finished soldering up that remote board. Here it is. Um, it's just running. It's reading those uh, those two lithium-ion cells there. They're in parallel, so it's just one battery. I got my uh, Fluke 87 hooked up to that battery. And it's reading 3.648 volts right now. And here's what the remote is reading right now. 3.649. So it's pretty darn accurate, and you can see the uh, the rounded value is 
So that's what you actually see on the display. Uh, yeah, it's just a lot easier to read that way. And right now you can see it's reading in five cells. It goes, sorry, six cells. It goes zero, one, two, three, four, five. So it's reading in five cells. And the great thing about this thing that I programmed in is that you can uh, go through and you can change exactly uh, the parameters you want. Your upper voltage limit, you can make that whatever you want. You can make it 3.649, 3.648 to one millivolt uh, precision. So that'll be like your upper voltage cutoff, which your BMS trips at. Then you got lower voltage limit, same thing. You can adjust that to wherever you want it. Uh, your balance voltage, that'll be the voltage that the regulators come on at. The, um, that'll be the voltage at which this thing will start uh, discharging the cell. And uh, yeah, so when you, when you uh, change this, it'll reprogram all of the remotes to the voltage you set on here. Uh, and then there's the number of cells. So right now it's set to 5. Uh, I think it was reading 6 before, so I might have a bug in the code there, but anyway. So if I set it to 7, let's see what happens when I set it to 7. Exit out of here. Exit out of here. Yeah, and there we go, it's reading uh, 7. I guess it's reading 8, I might have a slight bug there, but... Eh, haven't quite finished the software on this thing, so... As you can see, the top left there is just garbage, it's just... It's not done yet. So yeah, this thing's working. Um, yeah, stay tuned for more. Alright, so I thought I'd just get a nice good close-up of this thing. So, right here is your uh, balance resistors. So there's four 33 ohm resistors in parallel there. Um, this little SOT23 here is your um, uh, discharge uh, MOSFET. So that basically uh, connects these resistors, this side of those resistors to ground. Um, this little resistor here is your gate pull-down for this FET in case something you know, happens with the circuitry over here, this FET will get shut off. Uh, here's an input fuse um, rated for 2 amps. Um, a few service mount capacitors. Um, here's an LED here to indicate um, when current is flowing through these resistors. So whenever the uh, remote is uh, discharging the module, that red LED will go on there. Um, here's a 12-bit ADC and um, a 0.2% uh, voltage reference right there. Um, here's a shoddy diode for the boost converter and here's a Cypress uh, microcontroller. It has an internal boost converter in it so it uh, it just uses this diode and uh, this external inductor here and it can generate 5 volts from the uh, low battery voltage input. So you can have all the way down to 1.5 volts on here and it'll still generate 5 volts. Um, here is just some pull-up resistors for the uh, the I squared C bus. Uh, there's an I squared C bus that communicates with ADC. Um, here is your dip switch that will set the address for the remote, so you can flip these, and you can basically set where it will show up on that LCD display. And uh, here's your digital isolator, uh, good for I think uh, 800 volts if my memory serves correctly. Um, then just right down at the bottom here, there is another MOSFET and another gate pull-down resistor. Uh, the MOSFET, all it does is it just it turns, um, since uh, the output of this digital isolator is all strong drives, so it either drives it strong high or strong low, um, since there are many remotes in parallel on this communication bus, uh, the data coming out of these remotes really has to be an open drain. So what that does is uh, the FET there basically turns that strong drive into an open drain drive. So uh, one of these pins is pulled up to 5 volts at the main board and these remotes to communicate back to the main board they just uh, pull down that, uh, that one pin or that one line with this MOSFET here. And that's it, that's pretty much how it works. And then there's just a few more um, caps and things on the back and, and that's basically it. It's, pretty simple and uh, yeah there's a pretty wide isolation barrier there so uh, it should be good. Alright.